Hello, so I wanted to use a Bren gun more in its natural element in a sense to show you um, what it would look like when it's using its bipod and therefore a lot more controllable than, um, ow, smack the Bren gun magazine into my jawler, rather than it, you know, being actually, you're trying to hold it because it's a very big rifle or sort of, you know, light machine gun to hold if you're not doing that so often. Still not really got enough room here, but what I can do is basically demonstrate sort of how it would work. So you flip your rear sight up, like that, and the rear sight, the lighting's too dim here, it goes, is that 16 it says on there? So imagine that's 1600 yards, um, but basically you pull this into your shoulder like that, you can get a cheek weld like that, and then you can see down the sight absolutely fine like that. I'll move the camera in a minute and see if I can get the camera looking down the Bren gun sights. But this is how it would actually, you know, normally be used, getting a cheek weld and looking through the iron sight there. So the iron sights is set down the left side of the Bren. You have to use this right-handed and then use your right eye. It won't work if you're left eye dominant. You have to use your right eye to look down the iron sights. So that's how it works. So basically, you charge it. Charging handle is on the right. And then you'd be ready to fire. There's a fire selector on here somewhere. I think that's here. Yeah, there it is. So you've got on here semi, full, and sort of safe. Obviously, this is a D axe, it doesn't matter, but you've got the sort of free firing positions. But anyway, let's just set that to. I think that's stuck now, this fire selector. That's a bit annoying, but yeah, the fire selector is stuck. There we go. So let's move that back to there. So yeah, all you do with the Bren is basically use it normally in a lane position, obviously you wouldn't have your legs up like I've got them there, it's just so I can fit them in. So I'll move the camera back in a second so you can see more of the actual position you'd want to be using with this. But yeah, it's a lot more comfortable when you're down like this. The advantage obviously of the vertical magazine is that it lets you go lower to the ground. Um, because if you had this magazine under underneath you'd have to have a bigger bipod, meaning you'd be more exposed. So let me just change the camera angle so you can see that. stub my toe on the bring gun. So there we go, what you would do, lay down flat with it, get your eye to there, you've got your eye right in the iron sight, so I can aim that at the camera there. Um, so yeah, as you can see the Bren is actually surprisingly comfortable when you're laying prone with it. It's just obviously if you're standing vertical with it it's a bit awkward to hold. Uh, with a sling it certainly helps a lot. Um, so yeah, the Bren is pretty straightforward like this. The offset sights are actually really nice. Um, a very, very nice iron sight. You've got a ring as your rear sight and you've got a three point post as your front sight, which is very easy to focus on stuff. And yeah, not much you can complain about with a Bren like this. But as you can see, the bipod gives you a lot of maneuverability with this. It's just sort of aiming upwards, aiming downwards. So it can be used obviously on like a pillbox style thing. It can be used on flat ground. If you watch any of the videos from America of people with full auto Bren shooting them, you'll notice how nicely the recoil is controlled by this thing. The reason being that the Bren is fairly heavy for what it is, and it's shooting 303, and it shoots about 550 rounds per minute, I think it is. So that's a combination that means the recoil is quite manageable, especially when you're using the bipod. Whereas opposed to some of the lighter, you know, full auto rifles or light machine guns, they would buck around a lot more because they weren't as sturdily built. And obviously, that's got advantages and disadvantages. It's nicer carrying it around, but not as nice when you actually have to shoot it. But yeah, it's obviously when you're laying flush, nearly everything can be done with the Bren. You can take the magazine out. You obviously put a fresh magazine in. I've not got much practice doing this yet. You can access the charging handle. Um, and obviously, you can aim. So nearly everything with the Bren can be done when you're prone of it without having to stand up and expose yourself. Which is pretty good, obviously, because that would defeat the point of, you know, using it. You've got your thing there for um, changing the barrel. I can't do that with this Diac one. Um, and that's also your front carry sort of handle. Um, but yeah, all in all, the Bren is really, really nice. And as said, it certainly works better when you have it prone on the bipod than if you're trying to hold it and demonstrate it. Because like this, it's actually fairly comfortable to, you know, aim and do whatever with. <sighs> Whereas if you're using it... Um, like holding it, as I said, it's very front heavy. But when you've got the bipod deployed, the front heaviness factor isn't really a thing. So obviously, I'm sure you can see there, if I just literally hold it like that on my shoulder, um, I can have my arms free and it doesn't really matter. You know, it sits where it's meant to sit. 
so there you go. So that's the Bren gun. As I said, it's um, you know a really really cool light machine gun from World War Two. They've still got some of these slightly cheaper ones on D and B Military at the moment. So these are five hundred and fifty pounds as opposed to m most Brens, which are a thousand pounds plus a Dx over here. And that's because these are post-war DX, um, so they're not worth as much as the ones of the World War II collectible value. But, you know, as see, and obviously, I think I was saying that you can, if I take the mag out first so you can see that, so you can take the magazine out, uh, you can flip that down, you can pull your dust cover back over, and then you've got, you know, the Bren in a much more compact position. As said as well, what you can also do is fold up the bipod. So that will go down like that. There we go, that's locked in. And then you've got the Bren ready for stowing and carrying. And obviously, as you can see, the size is quite remarkably different with the bipod in and the magazine out. But there you go, so Bren gun, you want this up really in that position to carry it like that. In theory, if you had a mag in, you could sort of swing it around and shoot it like that. But as I said, it's more obviously designed for using with its bipod. You've also got tripod mounts on it if you had the bigger tripod set up for it. The charging handle on this is nice, it's like the SLR's charging handle that when you pull it back it actually flips forwards and re, you know, stops itself catching on things which is nice. But yeah, Bren guns are lovely, I can certainly see the appeal of them, they are really really cool bits of kit. Um, hopefully most of this is in frame, I said it's very awkward when you're trying to shoot, show something like a Bren gun on video. Obviously I'm very jealous of the Americans who have the very big open ranges where they can put several different cameras at different angles and um... You know, you're not going to have anybody complaining that you're in the open field with a machine gun. But there you go. So, that's the Bren gun. So, to insert the magazine, you slide the dust cover forwards. You rock the magazine in like an AK magazine. You'd lift up this bit. You can deploy the legs like that pretty quickly. There we go. And then, you'll just lift the rear sight up. There we go. And then you are ready to put your shoulder into it. And you're ready to shoot. Obviously, you charge it again, but... Um, there you go. So yeah, brain gun, marvellous bit of Czech engineering. Obviously this is the British built version of them. Um, but yeah, it's easy to see when you've got a Bren in this position why they were so damn popular for what they were. Because they are just a really, really solidly built light machine gun. Um, in many ways it feels a lot like an AK in terms of how sturdy the bits are, like the rocking magazine and everything. Um, but yeah. Bren guns are very, very nice, and if you feel like picking up either a Diak or a live one in the country where you can do that legally, I don't think you'd regret it, you know, as long as you've got the spare money for it, because they are brilliant bits of engineering. Um, and, you know, you can look at this and you can see just how solidly built stuff used to be. I doubt there's many modern machine guns that feel as solid as a Bren, even if they're actually a lot more practical, you know, but this thing does not feel like it will fall apart on you in any way, shape or form.